Play Convention Center. Um, this is one of my favorite subjects, right? Disruptive innovation. I will try to provoke all of you to think about the things that you could be changing, to becoming a disruptor in your industry or in another industry, and, and taking advantage of this great opportunity that technology has brought to us. It has equalized the, the, the playing field between the big companies and the small ones. Ideally, you should want to be motivated by both, by purpose and ambition. And some do, but again, for practical purposes, we know that companies need to make money to remain in business. So that's why companies innovate, to make money. Very simple. It's become known as the S Corp of innovation. It happens to every company. So what do you do when you are there? Uh, this is what is known as the innovator's dilemma. Let me tell you what most companies do. They do what they know how to do. What took them from zero to something, right, from here to here. So they do a little incremental improvement. They improve the packaging, they add a little extra functionality, they make the battery last a little longer, they make a little improvement. That's innovation to some extent. But that's not very sustainable. And the reason is because here, there is someone else solving the problem they are solving for their clients in a very different way. Over the past 10 years, more than 50% of the Fortune 500 companies have pretty much gone out of business or gone bankrupt or are wiped out or what acquired So I went a little further in my research and said, okay, let's go back to the original Fortune 500 list. So when you go back to 1955, which is not a lot of time, it's 60 years, 64 years, right? Just 60 years ago, right? You come and you look which companies from that original list are still in business, only 50 of them have survived for 60 years. Only 50 of them are there. IBM is one of them, by the way. And that's because IBM has been able to transform itself, to use those forms of innovation. We're not selling, you know, typing or punching machines anymore. We're selling quantum computing and blockchain. It has changed. And that's the only way to remain in business. The, the provocation here is think about how you at the personal level can continue learning the new skills that are necessary to be valid and relevant in the marketplace, to continue studying non-stop, right? Regardless of your role, regardless of whether you are the, the, the CEO of a company or a strategy manager or a business analyst, it doesn't matter. Think about how your business is operating and what you guys should do. Culture is fundamental for innovation, right? Many people say, yeah, well, we're innovators. But when someone makes a mistake, they fire them. That discourages innovation because innovation requires experimentation and failure. Failure is required for success. And so companies that fire you for, for, for making a mistake, they are not encouraging innovation. A culture of innovation is a culture that allows people to take risks. Innovators are actively experimenting with emerging technologies. They don't wait until the technology is proven. The industry that you are in, just go on Google, what is the average research and development investment for my industry, and then see how much you're doing in your company. And if you are investing average, well, you're average, right? And so companies that are disruptors are not only trying to improve what they do, are exploring how they can replace what they do, how they could replace their entire business. Because if you don't do it, someone else will do it. Someone else will replace you. So you might as well find a way to replace your model yourself and remain in business with a different model and working on projects that are outside their core business. A great, I could talk about IBM, we do it as well, but maybe a very good, well-known example is Google, right? They started doing search, online search, and then they went into productivity applications competing with Microsoft, and they did well. And then cloud computing, and then they acquired you know, YouTube, and they've done a series of things. Today, they are investing on self-driving vehicles. Any connection between online search and self-driving vehicles? Disruptors understand the real need of their clients. And, and, and this, is a, this, is, this is a very important point that I, I will explain with a, with, a, with a real life example of a company that was doing great, but they missed what was the real problem that they were solving. Does anyone remember Tower Records here, right? And this is the point of the real business. They thought that their business was selling long plays and they were very good at, they were the best in the world at it, right? That was not their business. What was their business? This is a cr critical question. Music. That's the answer. They were bringing music to people. And the long play doesn't, I don't care. Would you care to have a long play right now? No. You care to listen to the music, unless you are a collector or something, but you care about the music. Their business was bringing music to people. And they missed that very clear need of what they were supposed to do. They could have done many things. They could have created their own online platform. They had the money to do it. 
to deliver MP3 files online. Remember Blockbuster. This is another. I, I also met the professor who wrote this case for Harvard Business School. Another fantastic story. Could take an hour to talk about it. Right? Out of business. Radio Shack, Kodak. Um, what is this? Sears. Very powerful retailer. Right? They they were an icon of American power. The Sears Tower in Chicago. Right? They already lost the name. Now it's Willis Tower. What all of these guys have in common is that they created platforms. They created platforms to integrate an ecosystem of business model innovation, right? And it talks about value creation and value capture. Value creation is what you do. You add some value to the, to the, to the chain of what you're offering, right? And that costs money and time and energy and research and so on. In light of being able to then do some value capture, characteristics of disruptive Innovation. Number one, they create an entirely new paradigm of doing things. A good example, there could be many others, right? It's software as a service. You all may have heard of Salesforce.com, right? They, so within the technology industry, they disrupted all of the software companies delivering the same, same like with the book, with the, the long plays, right? Delivering the music in a different way. These guys delivered the software in a different way. They disrupted the industry big time. It's not a progressive, incremental advancement comes up with something completely different. Think about manufacturing, right? Since the times of uh, Henry Ford over 100 years ago, uh, with the assembly line, which was a great revolutionary innovation in manufacturing, what 3D printing does is it gets rid of the entire assembly line of the entire manufacturing plant altogether. <laughs> Think about that. So it disrupts a series of different things. Disruptors are solution oriented. Um, from our example from Tower Records, which I think is very relevant, think about uh, books as well, right? Companies like Audible, right? Where you can listen to an audio book. I'm a big reader, I read about the book per week. I do it through these guys. Now, people say, you're not reading. Well, it depends. What do you call reading? I mean, do I have the piece of paper here? No, but I get the knowledge. I walk out of my, you know, f four hour flight, and I already know the content of what the guy said. Yeah, I read all of the what is encompasses artificial intelligence. It allows companies to really more deeply understand and actually predict what their consumers want. So quantum computing leverages you know, the concepts of quantum physics, right, which is this principle of superposition, to make amazingly big calculations that can help for ultra-efficient logistics, for understanding the size of the universe, for making financial predictions and prevent financial crisis. This is a big, big, big deal. series of disruptive technologies. And the thing is that technology builds on itself. Technologies leverage each other, and then they, they create this you know, network that you can leverage to do things that were unthinkable just 20 or 10 years ago, five years ago to that I, I've given talks about blockchain, right? Uh, we're doing some very interesting things at, at IBM with blockchain, uh, like for Food Trust, for example. We created a global consortium that started with Walmart and now we brought Nestle and all of the you know, food manufacturers and the distributors and so on. So you can track and you know exactly where your food comes. Then I told you, cloud got disrupted. Now there is this new thing called containerization. Think about what you would need to do to replace your business and start working on that. Because someone else is doing it. So you might as well do it yourself. Don't think incremental, think disruptive. Is there a much better simple way for my client to solve the problem that doesn't need what I offer? That's what you need to think. That's disruptive thinking. So with that, my friends, stay thirsty. <laughs> if you are familiar with that campaign. All right. Thank you. Thank you. Cheers. Thank you.